Hi, you guys. It's Yaz. And I want to answer a question that a lot of people ask. They always say, what does a narcissist do when the relationship ends? Well, that really depends on what's going on in the narcissist's life. Most of the time when the narcissist sees that the relationship is starting to crumble, they're going to have another supply already lined up before the actual collapse of that relationship, whether it's a reverse discard and, you know, they make you miserable or they show you indifference to the point where you just let them go because they could take or leave ever seeing you. Um, By that point, when you see a reverse discard and you have to let go of the narcissist, they most definitely have somebody, okay? But in the other case, when the narcissist lets go of you, they also have somebody as well. So very rarely will a narcissist leave a relationship unless they have somebody already lined up. So when the relationship ends, that narcissist, first of all, is going to be very bitter about it, okay? Even if they are the ones that cause the relationship to break down because we know they don't take accountability. So if the relationship broke down, automatically it's your fault. They're going to rationalize it out in their minds and say, well, you did something. You always fought with them or you wouldn't let things go or you made a big issue out of nothing or you kept bringing up the past. So it's your fault, your fault, your fault. It's never the narcissist's fault, okay? Because they can't deal with the fact that they did anything wrong. So they always twist it around and blame the other person. This is, I think, one of the key things in knowing whether somebody is narcissistic. Not just the fact that they don't have empathy, but they're always going to blame the, they're going to, you know, they're blame shifters. They're going to blame you for the collapse of that relationship. Not only that, they're going to blame you because you didn't make them happy. See, a narcissist can never be happy. They can never be satisfied because they have emptiness inside themselves. They have a very low ego and, you know, you're not going to be able to fix that. The most perfect person in the world is not going to be able to fix that. They are damaged from their, you know, usually their childhood because they went through trauma or they were never validated or their childhood, they felt they were out of control or they were the entitled child who always got their way and never had boundaries. So they're always going to feel like they're not enough. They're empty inside. This is why they're always looking for other people to, to make them feel complete, make them feel whole. They never feel like satisfied. All right. And it all stems from that fragile, insecure ego. So what is that narcissist going to do when that relationship ends? Well, they're going to try to satisfy their cravings. They're going to need a high. So a lot of them will go out and try to have sex with a lot of different people or with the new supply and everything. They're going to try to make themselves feel good because narcissists don't want to feel pain. And that's why a lot of narcissists, you know, a lot of them... You know, they're addicted to drugs, they're addicted to sex, they're addicted to alcohol because they're trying to, you know, cover up all that pain that they have inside. They want to feel good because narcissists deep down feel very low about themselves. They're not happy with themselves. So they, they, now you, they just came out of a relationship with you and although they may have this new supply, there is still that little hurt that they got going on because the relationship didn't work out with you. They weren't able to fool you. You finally saw what that narcissist was about and you said enough is enough and either you got out of that relationship or the narcissist said in their mind, you are not what they thought. See, narcissists, when they meet you, they think you're like this majestic type of person. They, they build you up in their mind that you're going to, you know, fulfill all the, the, the needs that they want. And when they see that, you know what, you're just a human being and you have flaws and you have needs and you have demands. They don't want to deal with that because it's not filling up their, you know, their love tank, their happy tank. So they're, you know, they're going to feel a little bit of, you know, loneliness, even though they may have a new supply, they will be reflecting a little bit back on why the relationship didn't work out with you. And that's why a lot of them, when they have the new supply, they're going to be bashing you because they want somebody 
to, you know, agree with them and validate them. And they're going to play the victim to the new supply. I was so good to them and they didn't appreciate me. And my ex used to nitpick. I had to check in with him or her every five minutes. Nothing was good enough for that ex. They're going to project onto the new supply all the bad things that they did to you. They're going to say that you did to them. Okay. So, So they'll say things like, yeah, my ex was no good. She cheated on me and everything like that. When in fact, it was the narcissist that cheated. So understand this. If you get involved with a narcissist after they break up with some somebody, most of the time what they're telling you about their exes is what they did to the ex, okay? So initially, they they might be glad to get, you know, they'll be a little sad in one sense that the relationship didn't work out, but they'll also be happy too because they have this new person and now it's another cycle. Now we're going into another cycle. It's always cycles. And they're going to go with the new person. And now the new person is now put up on the pedestal because they're new. They're the shiny new toy now in the narcissist's life. And the narcissist in the beginning with the new supply is going to, you know, pretend to be happy or, or be happy because they think that this new person is everything that they want, Okay. But in time, see, time is what, what kills the narcissist because in time, everybody gets old to that narcissist. They get tired of the same shit with somebody. They get bored. The biggest thing with a narcissist and the reason that you'll never satisfy a narcissist is because instead of appreciating what they have, they always want more and they get bored. They hate the mundane everyday life. They always need a rush. They always need excitement, okay? This is why a lot of them too are sex addicts because they, you know, they get bored with one person. They could have great sex with somebody. Like some people are in relationships with narcissists and they say, you know, I gave the narcissist great sex and everything like that. And I don't know why they cheated on me because they got bored. Okay. They got bored and they wanted something exciting and something new is exciting to the narcissist. Plus it's, you know, it's a a rush for them to feel like, Ooh, somebody else wants me. They always have to feel like all these people want them. Okay. So when the narcissist leaves the relationship, they're going to be very bitter and angry about you They're going to smear you to everybody that they know and maybe even people you mutually know. And, you know, they have to justify why the relationship didn't work out. They're always worried about their image and they don't want people to look down on them like they did anything wrong. So they're going to make it like you, it was all your fault. It was all your fault. And then they're going to be, you know, centered in on that new supply. But even when they're centered in on the new supply, guess what? they're still prospecting for other options, even though they have a new supply. Because with a narcissist, one person is not enough. A narcissist needs multiple people, multiple supply to tell them they're fucking great, okay? One person telling them great is not enough. And this is why they can move on to a new supply, you know, be in the relationship with a new supply. And guess what? They're still talking to other people, Okay, they always have backups. They always have a backup plan because a narcissist is afraid of a get, getting abandoned. And somebody said to me, well, if narcissists are so afraid of getting abandoned, why do they abandon us? Because when they abandon you, they have somebody. So they're not being abandoned because they already have that other person lined up. It's not like they're abandoning you and they're by themselves and they're, bro- they're broken up from you and they're sitting home by themselves. When a narcissist breaks up with you, they're going to be going, 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 going. They're not going to sit home. They're not going to let themselves fall into that depression. They're going to keep themselves busy. They're going to be busy with that new supply or with other people that are around them. They're going to be going out a lot. They're going to be, some of them will be partying it up. They're going to be having sex. They're going to try to really, they want to feel that happiness because of that negativity of being broken up with you, they're going to try to fill it, you know, impulsively with things that are going to give them a lift. Okay. This is why somebody said to me, her boyfriend 
his brother died. And right after the, the funeral, he wanted to have sex with her and she couldn't believe it because he needed to feel some kind of high, all right? Some oxytocin to his brain. He needed to feel some pleasure because he couldn't deal with the pain. And it's the same thing when a narcissist breaks up with you a lot of the, the first thing a narcissist may do when you reject them or you leave the relationship is go out on and, and, and have sex with somebody because they need to feel like they're wanted because narcissists too, they associate, some of them associate sex with love. So they feel like if they could get sex from multiple people, these multiple people love them, love who they are. It inflates their ego. It makes them feel good. So that narcissist constantly has to be made to feel good about themselves, okay? So now they're going to be busy with this new supply. They've already smeared you. And as months go into the relationship with the new supply, they're going to start to get sick of that new supply, okay? And they're, they're going to be talking to other people on the side. And guess what? They may even bounce back to you. And you may hear from that narcissist and they, but remember this, when that narcissist comes back, they're not coming back because they realized, Ooh, I love you so much. Oh, I miss you. Or no, that narcissist, if they really loved you, they would never take a chance of losing you. Understand that. All right. When somebody really loves you, they will never take a chance of losing you to somebody else. So that narcissist, they felt, number one, maybe you weren't going anywhere. And now they're coming back to you because they're tired of the new supply or they're bored or the new supply is giving them trouble and they may hit you up, but they're hitting you up not because they missed you and, and so in love with you as a person. They're hitting you up because they missed something that they got from you. Understand that. They missed that supply. That supply could be anything. It could be, you know, sex that you gave them. It could be, you know, living in your place. It could be money that you have that they feel there's a better opportunity with you. Or it could just be that you gave that narcissist more attention than the new supply is now giving them. All right. But the thing is this, you guys, when you break up with a narcissist, it's got to be final, finito. That is it. All right. Because when a relationship is broke and you try to bring it back together again, it'll never be the same. It's like when somebody cheats on you, okay, and a lot of people get back together, it's it's never the same. It's like a vase that breaks and you glue it back together. Yeah, you could have the vase all together, but it's still not the same vase, all right? And that trust is not there. It's very, very hard to rebuild trust with somebody and a narcissist never trusts you. So if they never trust you, how are you ever going to fucking trust them? You can't. All right. And don't forget the abuse that these people gave you. They gaslit you. They weren't open and honest with you. They didn't tell you how they really felt. They led you on. Okay. They manipulated you because they wanted something out of you. And it's up to you to figure out what did that narcissist want from you? The nicer that narcissist is to you, the more you know that you have something that they want. So figure it out, okay? N people are not just nice to you because, you know, they're in love with you. And this is, this is you know, the misconception that people have. They feel like, oh, they came back because they realized they really loved me. Or they came back, you know, because they were missing me or something. They're not missing you and it's not because they were so in love with you. It's because you had something that they wanted, okay? And when they come back and you take them back again, now your value goes down because they feel you're desperate. You're taking them back after they broke your boundaries, after they disrespected you, and they're going to have little respect for you and say that you're weak and you're desperate for taking them back. Or you're a sucker and you don't see through their manipulation. And they're going to get over on you again. And now they feel that they can keep coming back. That even if you break up the next time, guess what? They feel 
that you're weak enough and you're going to take them back again. All they got to do is manipulate you. All they got to do is hit you with the love word. All they got to do is hit you with the marriage word. All they got to do is future fake you and boom, hook, line, and sinker because you want these things so bad, you fucking believe it. Don't do it, you guys. Don't be a sucker. These people are game players and they will play games and they will waste your life. You'll be back and forth with this narcissist. You know, they'll be coming in and out of your life. And every time you let them back and forth in in your life, you're looking like a sucker. All right. I'm sorry. I got to tell you like it is. I've been there. That's why I know all this. Okay. You wouldn't really know this unless you really lived it. And I've lived it. All right. So I'm telling you, you know, if it's not right from the onset, it's not going to be right if you're broken up and then they go with the new supply. Now you're going to, if you get back together with that narcissist, now you're going to be questioning them about the new supply. And guess what? They'll do it again. They'll do it again. When they start to get tired of you or you get resistance, they'll find another supply. All right. And they'll pull this shit. And that's why a lot of these exes, you know, they're, they're getting breadcrumbed and the narc keeps going back to the ex because they're playing their exes, all right? All they're doing is dropping the L word, the love word, and these people are, you know, because they're so desperate for love, they're taking them back or they feel because they invested time with this person, they're taking them back only to go back on that cycle of abuse, all right? So when the narcissist leaves the relationship, okay, they're going to be angry at you. They're going to blame you. They're going to put, you know, put you on blast sometimes on social media, making you look bad and talk bad to everybody about you. And they're going to, they're not going to be sitting home, you know, uh, crying over you that I can tell you a narcissist when they break up with you, they're not going to be crying over you. They refocus and redirect to the new person. Okay. Now they're focused on the new person in making this new person, you know, the, everything that they want out of life. And, and a lot of them will post it on social media. Oh, I'm in this great relationship. And this person doesn't fight with me like the last one or something. And they do that because they know that you're watching, all right, if they post it publicly. And also they want everybody to say, oh, I'm so glad you're in a happy relationship now. They need to hear that from the outsiders, like it wasn't their fault and, you know, it must have been your ex was, she was crazy or he was crazy. I'm glad you're in a good relationship. And some of them will move on to a new relationship and not post it publicly. And why is that? Because they have multiple supply. They're dealing with a bunch of different people. So, you know, they don't want anybody to know, okay? They're keeping it in hiding. And also, they don't want you to contact the new supply because the new supply may have gotten involved with the narcissist while he was still or she was still with, with, with you and they don't want any problem with, with you guys talking to each other about the timing of when the narcissist got involved with the new supply, because what they'll do is they'll play both sides. They'll be in a relationship with you. Then they'll start a relationship with the new supply and tell the new supply they're single when they're still with you. So when they go into the relationship with the new supply, some of them are very careful about posting about it because they're afraid that you'll contact the new supply and say, well, that person was with me when you met them, okay? So understand that. The bottom line is this. When you're broken up with the narcissist, your focus has got to be on you. You, 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 you. You've got to get yourself busy the way the narcissist is getting themselves busy in redirecting your life and focusing in on what's going to make you happy, okay? You don't jump into a new relationship quick just to, you know, get back at the narcissist because you're going to be back in the same boat again. You take your time and you, you, you go slow with it. Okay. To make sure that you next relationship you get in can be a long-term one and not just, you know, bounce from person to person to person and everything like that. All right. Who cares what the fuck the narcissist does? Now they are somebody else's problem. They're not your problem. And they're go understand this. Whoever they get involved with, the next supply, 
They're going to find a problem with them and then be on to the next and then be on to the next. If they do end up staying with the supply for a while, because some people come back at me and say, oh, well, they're marrying the new supply. Okay, so they're marrying the new supply. But understand that narcissist is not all in on that relationship. They're going to have other things going on on the side. They're going to be talking to other people. And if somebody else comes along that's better than who they're with, guess what? They're going to go with it. They're going to take their best option. So they'll never, ever be 100% locked down to anybody. So if that narcissist can't appreciate who you are as a person, person, okay, then you don't fucking need them. And understand this. Be glad you got rid of the narcissist because God forbid you got sick. God forbid you were married or in a relationship with them and you had financial problems. That narcissist is going to bail. When the going gets tough, the narcissist gets going. They're not a ride or die person. They are the last person that you want in your corner when you got some, uh, you're going through a tough time in life. All right. So be glad they're gone. Uh, yeah, good luck to you. Okay. And just sit back and smile and say to yourself, you know what? They're going to sink their own boat because nothing is ever enough for that narcissist. They'll never be satisfied. They're never going to be content with anybody or anything that they have in their life because they're an empty hole of a person inside. Okay? So I hope that helps you. If it does, please hit the subscribe button. I'm losing my voice because I'm preaching again. And please share the podcast. Have a great day, you guys. If you guys are having a problem in your dating or relationship or you're dealing with somebody maybe that's narcissistic, you don't know if they're a narcissist or you're just having problems, you're in a toxic relationship and you need some clarity on it, go to the link in the podcast description for my website where I offer email and phone coaching. If you have a quick question, just a quick question and you wanna get a video sent back to you answering your question, there's also a link there for Vizio, where I will send you a personalized video answering your question. Hi, you guys, it's Yaz, and I want to tell you about my two books on Amazon. The first book is Regain Your Power. It's all about power and relationship. Who has the power in the relationship? And it goes into all of that, okay? The other book is Signs He's Not Into You, He's Wasting Your Time, okay? Check it out. It gives you a lot of good clues as to whether you're with somebody who's a real one or somebody who's just going to waste your time. You could read them both with Kindle's free trial membership. So check it out. Link is in the podcast description. Hi, you guys. I just want to let you know that The Game Exposed now has their merchandise available. Check out the link in the bio and you could go check it out. There's cool hoodies, cool sweatpants, cool hats. So go to the bio for the link. And also, don't forget to follow me on Facebook at the game exp123 and also on Instagram the game exp123 okay and have a great day mm-hmm.